we move on to looking at what is the e-governance life cycle, project life cycle. Okay. Uh, how, how is it different from our typical uh, SDLC or our typical project uh, life cycle? Now, one of the things which we see in this uh, cycle is that e-governance projects, they look beyond the project, typical project management phases which we have. Okay. So we have a start and we have an end uh, which comes after implementation. But in e-governance, post-implementation becomes more critical. That is the OEM phase, operation and maintenance, where, where we are looking at sustainability and enhancements of the existing services and bringing in new services. Okay. So what you see on the screen is, is the typical six phases uh, in terms of steps. You could call them as, or phases. And uh, in addition, there are two phases which cut across right from the beginning uh, till the complete uh, life, life of that uh, project. Okay. One is the project management itself. The second is change management. Okay. How do you bring in the stakeholders along with you, how do you get their buy-in, how do you uh, not only reduce uh, resistance but how do you really get their complete buy-in so that they don't really uh, become uncomfortable in moving from the old stage to this new type of government working. Okay. So that this is a uh, typical cycle which we follow in any of the e-government. And uh, now if you look at this cycle, then you have around eight knowledge areas. Okay. Uh, we come to the PM book uh, nine areas later on, but here if you categorize what are the type of the knowledge areas which are required in conceptualizing, designing, implementing, and maintaining or managing the government projects, you, you look at these eight uh, knowledge areas. The project or the program management itself. Is, uh, is, is one very, very important. How do you uh, manage e-government projects which has multiple complexities? We'll talk of these complexities in the subsequent slide. And then you have the stakeholder management. Okay, that is the change management part of it. Technology management, procurement management, because we are not procuring only computers, as I said earlier. It's more to do with services. How do you bring in accountability by bringing in the private uh, uh, the employees from the private sector to man the delivery centers. So that's the larger uh, issue. Resource management, then you talk about the process reform, which you already said. And ultimately, how do you manage the, uh, the extent of knowledge and learning experience which is generated out of these projects and share those across other initiatives. And uh, the challenge is, how do you bring all these together holistically into our design principles of e-government projects. And, and that is the real challenge. There is a capacity for people to understand and get a hold on these eight knowledge areas. Okay. Uh, uh, looking at the stakeholders, when we talk of stakeholders, we have been talking of primarily uh, citizens and businesses. So you have different categories of, uh, if you look at the canvas of e-governance, uh, we see that projects are intended for different stakeholders like the citizens, so G2C projects are there, government to citizens. Similarly, for businesses, G2B, then government to government is G2G, and then government to employees, you, you have G2E. Uh, and these uh, projects, managing these projects is always a challenge, especially when projects involve multiple stakeholders with different expectations. Okay, the expectation levels are completely uh, not really the same. And uh, not only that, we get into new and unproven technology, uh, shifting our unclear project requirements, and above all, the constraints of resources, funds is always there. So with the, all these complexities, the challenge for managing e-government projects become slightly more, uh, uh, more uh, aggravated, I'll call it, so slightly more difficult as compared to uh, pure IT initiative pure IT project in a private or a public sector. Uh, 